Hey, what's up guys? Pan the Organizer here. So I'm at the 2024 Toronto Sport Card Expo in April, and uh, this is Canada's largest and longest running sports collectibles show. Uh, definitely one of the biggest in the world, of course, the biggest being the National in the USA, held in Cleveland and every other year in Chicago. So, but here in Canada, this Toronto Sport Card Expo is Canada's biggest, over 500 dealers and over 200,000 square feet of expo space. Uh, we're going to do a tour together so you can see all three exhibition halls to kind of give you an idea of what to expect. And regardless of which sport you like collecting, all major sports are represented. So we're talking about hockey, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, uh, and even uh, collectibles like Pokemon and other things. So it can be in, into modern sports cards, into vintage cards as well. Uh, there's things for everyone, whether it's in the late 1800s all the way up to uh, the latest sport card craze. You're going to find boxes uh, of wax as well. You can find individual value bins. If you like to find uh, something that's out of this world for a low price, you can have uh, jerseys, of course, of your favorite players. There's picture frames that are available and other uh, collectibles and memorabilia, so, such as these championship rings. I thought that was very, very awesome. Uh, there's some magazines as well. There's uh, tickets to enter things like the Super Bowl that are for sale. You have some memorabilia like baseballs and uh, footballs and hockey pucks and crazy auctions as well from uh, people like Heritage, Golden, PWCC. Uh, it's insane. So from uh, inexpensive all the way up to cards worth in the six figures or millions of dollars, you can find anything for your budget. You can also have your cards graded. So all the major uh, grading companies were there. So PSA, Beckett, TAG, CGC, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, pretty insane. Let's get the show started. So I highly recommend that you arrive uh, as early as possible because lineups are long. Uh, you should purchase your tickets ahead of time. Uh, no that the show is held from Thursday all the way to Sunday. Of course, the weekend is the craziest. Uh, today, I'm filming this on a Friday to give you an idea of just how much people there are. So we enter through the main entrance. There are three halls. So three hall number three, four, and five. The biggest being the main hall. This is hall number five. And we're going to go through the, uh, the rows to kind of give you an idea of what you can expect. Because I certainly would have liked um, to see something uh, just as ex extensive as this video uh, before I went to kind of give me an idea. There were other videos on YouTube, but uh, this one here will likely help you uh, kind of determine, is this show for you? Uh, comic books as well are represented, guys. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how you should uh, first prep, right? So what I recommend is that you arrive at this show or any other uh, sports cards trading shows uh, with a list, right? So prepare ahead of time a list of the cards uh, that you really, really want to add to your collection. We call that PC, right, in, in this field, uh, personal collection or if you're um, like me, something for investments, have your priorities because I'm telling you, your mind will go bonkers. There are so many vendors that are present and you're going to be enticed to want to buy everything off the show floor. I know my mind uh, almost exploded. This was my first Toronto Sport Card Expo. I had been to one in Quebec. Uh, I'm going to the one in Montreal in the month of May. And uh, my dream is to attend the National this is uh, the uh, biggest sports cards show in the world. It's in the U.S. So one year it's in Cleveland. The next year it's in Chicago and back to Cleveland and then to Chicago again. I'm told by uh, my American viewers that the uh, the one in Chicago is the one you really want to go to. So that's on my bucket list for sure. So uh, yeah, prepare a list. Arrive with your priorities set because there's pretty much everything that your heart desires there. And um, yeah, you can easily overspend and go way over your budget. So it's important to have some form of control, right? So set your priorities. And also while you're setting your priorities, set yourself a budget. Don't go there uh, expecting that you'll be able to uh, spend whatever you want and then you'll kind of tally it up. You can get yourself into some financial trouble, which you do not want. Because again, I'm telling you, your mind will be blown. There is everything from memorabilia to rings to uh, magazines to uh, vintage cards, modern cards, low-end cards, super high-end cards, things that are very rare. Uh, and uh, gaming stuff is very well represented too. If you guys like uh, Pokemon, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't understand that world because I've never been in it. Uh, I'm more into sports cards. 
but uh, there is uh, there are things for everyone as we're looking at these fantastic pieces in the PWCC auction because again the majority of the uh, big auction sites are there so heritage golden PWCC you name it um, it is easy easy to get whatever your heart desires once again uh, if you have a family bring your kids with you this is very family friendly uh, there are things for everyone you can see those Funko Pops there um, there's some uh, vendors for uh, food so don't expect anything crazy there's some uh, pizza slices and there are some uh, things like uh, some fried chicken there's a uh, water juice and those kinds of things but don't expect um, elaborate restaurants there are some restaurants 10 walk 10 minutes of walking distance if you guys want to eat something different but uh, yeah so that's tip number one arrive with a list and have a budget set your priorities straight and that way you don't you won't go over budget and you won't ruin your uh, time over at the show uh, tip number two is I highly recommend that you walk the entire show floor at least once before you commit to buying anything because uh, as soon as you're going to start on the first table you're likely going to want to buy something right and uh, that could get you into some trouble because later on you might find something that was higher on your priority list and then you uh, will have blown your budget uh, already so I yeah I highly recommend walk the entire show floor and it's going to give you an idea not only of the layout but what you can expect or at least where you can find your grail cards or the cards you're really looking into adding into your personal collection or as an investor if you're looking for some investment pieces so um, if you're only doing a quick walk around i would uh, probably say it's likely close to an hour to an hour and a half so yes it is long you'll be walking many many kilometers or miles during those days I personally went uh, on the uh, Thursday first, so that's the uh, preview show as they call. It's from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, you need some uh, VIP passes for that one, but that gets you in kind of an early access thing right before the uh, the rest of the general population comes in on the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So the biggest deals that I was able to do and the rarest cards that I wanted for my collection uh, were on that Thursday. So if you can purchase some VIP tickets, you can get uh, there is a VIP bronze, silver, and gold packages, which uh, give you a bunch of stuff as well. So you're going to have lanyards, you're going to have some cards, depending on which package uh, you're getting. You're going to have priority access as well to the show 30 minutes before everybody else, which is very important. Once again, first dibs on your favorite cards is important because things move fast. Uh, there are also some uh, signings with uh, celebrities. So in uh, this case, I think there was George St. Pierre on the weekend. I wasn't there on the weekend, though. I left uh, on Saturday morning so I was there for the Thursday and Friday shows but you can have access to sign things with uh, some of your favorite sports athletes that are there so the VIP packages will give you that there's this breaker lounge by the way from upper deck as we can see so if you buy boxes or packs you can go and unbox them there's even a private area up top with a nice vantage point where you can have some private meetings so I think that was really really cool um, so yeah there's a bunch of things that you can see during that first walk around set your priorities and then you know which booths you're going to want to hit first and you'll have an a better idea because it can get overwhelming right it is a very very big show uh, certainly the biggest I've ever attended and again this is the biggest uh, sport memorabilia show in all of Canada we're talking about 200,000 square feet <laughs> try and process that it is mind-boggling uh, also if you're planning on trading cards or selling cards while you're there because even uh, as an individual, if you're not a vendor, you can still uh, sell cards to vendors or to other people walking the show floor or do some um, some trades because there is a trade night. I think it was on the Saturday evening. So there is a trade night organized. So you can go there and trade with uh, fellow people from the hobby as we're looking at this uh, 1952 beautiful Mickey Mantle card. The uh, most expensive one being the PSA 10, one of only two copies in the world, by the way. And I think they evaluated that at 52 million US dollars. Um, it is insane. I saw a video on Sports Card Collector YouTube channel uh, where he visited the owner of that card and uh, it is known to be the most expensive sports card in the world currently. Um, so there are only two PSA 10s known to mankind and this is one PSA 9 version that is still worth a couple million surely that was on auction. So anyhow, um, yeah, price your cards if you're planning on selling or trading. So look at the comps ahead of time, regardless if you're looking on eBay or 130point.com to see for the latest sales or whatever website or uh, mobile uh, app you're using to price your cards. Arrive prepared. Um, 
have your cards in sleeves, of course, in top loaders or one touches, or if they're slabbed, protect your slabs, obviously, with team bags and all that kind of stuff. Uh, be ready, show that you're organized and have those prices good to go. So that way you're not scratching your head and uh, trying to look for comps while you're there because things move quickly. And uh, the more organized you look, obviously, the higher chances you have of doing some sales or some trades, right? And um, the same thing when you're arriving with your list and you're looking for things on your priority list, make sure you look at comps ahead of time. So although dealers try and do their best uh, to look at comps, there are some that just have so many cards that it's impossible for them to always currently update uh, their, their pricing because they attend many shows and it is overwhelming. Believe me, they work super hard. A uh, big shout out and my hats off to all these vendors that were there. Uh, it's very, very demanding and your brain kind of gets overloaded with uh, information and trades and prices. So what I did is I had a list of all the cards I wanted for my personal collection. And um, I did the latest price comps to make sure I know where I can start my negotiations. And another point is, of course, point number four, have fun while you're there. Enjoy the show. Uh, for many, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Take time to take it all in, indulge in your uh, memorabilia or in your your passion in your hobby if you're a collector well indul indulge in that uh, collection of course um, but take the time to soak it all in take it in do a walk of the entire floor as i said and see what's up there as we're looking at this hundred twenty thousand dollar v cup alex oveshkin rookie auto patch or rookie patch auto so all the sports once again are represented uh, all the major sports right hockey basketball football uh, also known as american football for international viewers uh, soccer baseball and uh, even things like pokemon uh, formula one for uh, those who like formula one cards and memorabilia it, it's just insane the sheer quantity of things that are there also when you're doing some trades i think it is very important we need to remind ourselves to be kind guys so if we expect vendors to give us time of day and to want to do trades with us or give us a good price uh well give them a smile shake their hand, say hi, present yourself. And I think that goes a long way. And the same is opposite too. If you're a vendor, uh, you're hoping to do some trades or deals or sales with some uh, customers that are uh, very, very nice and kind. You're more inclined to want to negotiate and to not, and to offer a good price. So don't come in there. I've, I've seen some people um, uh, both on the vendor side and also on the population side just like super harsh and uh, way too um, abrupt in their negotiation tactics and uh, yeah sure enough this didn't end up very well for both sides both parties um, usually if a vendor doesn't give the you time of day and they seem uh, like they don't really care about your presence well don't give them your hard-earned money um, walk around and go see somewhere else. Believe me, there are so many vendors. The competition is super, super high. So you're, it's not like uh, you'll be missing out on anything um, unless you're looking for this once in a lifetime one of one card that only one person has. Um, there, there are multiples of whatever card you're looking and chances are many vendors are selling the same card. So you know what? Talk to the vendors and give your hard earned money to the ones that you deem are the nicest the kindest and that took their time a day to explain things to you as well uh, I think being courteous and being nice goes a long way in this hobby and we all wish um, that well this hobby continues to grow right and the way to do that is to spread positivity at least that's my opinion and the other way around as well so if you're a potential buyer or you want to do some trades with them, uh, make sure you're kind. Like that really goes a long way as well. Those vendors, they go through long days. They've traveled many miles likely to be there, whether it's by plane or car or truck or boat or who knows how they arrived. Uh, but it takes some time to set up. They had to invest a lot of money because it costs them uh, quite a bit to be there. I was shocked uh, to hear some of the prices uh, to be there in a booth, especially the bigger booths. And we're talking a lot of uh, money invested there. A lot of them have their staff too. So uh, it can uh, be a financial burden if they don't sell a lot. So understand where they're coming from. They're overworked, overtired as well. Because as I said, this goes on for four days, but this is not their only show of the year, right? Uh, the, there are many, many trade shows that go on and these guys are like a, a mobile uh, operation. They go from one to another, trying to make ends meet. And um, in the end of the day, I think if both parties are happy and satisfied, it's kind of fun 
to uh, to know what's uh, well what what is going on in the hobby but also you can increase your collection so in my case my pc or my personal collection i have it uh, i'm there for many many years now because i want to um i want to kind of sit on it and uh, let it uh, well f gain in value over time so i'm not a uh, flipper i don't like to buy and sell every day i kind of treat it like the stock market so for me uh, investments in the financial markets i love investing in stocks but a way to diversify my portfolio is to invest in sports cards so i mainly focus on hockey but i also have uh, some football and some basketball so those are my three favorite sports american football basketball and hockey obviously this is canada so i was born to love hockey Hockey, I guess and um, yeah the way I see it is this is a hobby but at the same time I see it as a future investment so I'm sitting on my cards I let them appreciate I try to invest in some more stable stuff like the goats of every sport uh, and some value cards so those are more expensive obviously but sometimes I like to gamble a bit on future prospects and I purchase some rookies as well um, whether it's basketball, football, or hockey, in my case, there are some players that I really, really think will explode. And so I try to invest in them because that's where you're going to probably get the biggest gain in appreciation for the value. So let's move on now um, through the uh, main passage. So this is hall number four, they consider, I think. Uh, sorry, hall number three. So between hall five and hall four is hall three. So it's basically uh, this corridor or this hall that you're going through. And there are vendors there too. You never know, by the way, which deals you can make. So I highly encourage you to check things out, uh, talk to different people. And uh, sometimes you find some gems in this very hall. I found a couple of things for my PC that, uh, well, I couldn't believe <laughs> that we're at the show. So I was super stoked and super happy. So we're heading down these steps and now you make it to the uh, final hall, which is hall number four. Uh, as we're looking at the vendors, Pizza Pizza was there. Uh, the slices were not too expensive. So you're looking at $6.72 Canadian for a slice. What is that? Like five bucks uh, with the exchange rate. So as you're getting into here, you have the uh, grading companies that are there on site. So you can submit your cards and send them off for grading. As we're looking at the price list for PSA, they own 85% of the grading market at this point. So they're the behemoth uh, of the uh, grading companies. Uh, that's my favorite company as well because I, I feel that's the one that retains the value the most when you have your cards graded and slabbed by them. So as we're looking at KSA, uh, JSA authentication for your jerseys, uh, Beckett, so also known as BGS. Um, they're another very good one. So I think they're second behind PSA, um, especially for the uh, thicker cards. I think a lot of people uh, like BGS for that, but PSA for modern and vintage cards, they're really my favorite. Uh, in this hall here, this is on Friday. There was nobody for signings, but on the Saturday and Sunday, that's where you're going to meet all your sports athletes. There are sometimes some Hollywood actors. Uh, that's my understanding. So a bunch of people where you can get your jerseys signed, your sports memorabilia, your cards, whatever you guys want. Um, there is even a corner. Uh, this is uh, CSC. There's also CGC and TAG that were there for the grading. Um, so there's this kid's corner. I thought that was cool with some Pokemon stuff. Um, it makes kids feel safe and they can do their tradings in the little kid zone. That was super smart from the uh, organizers of the event, I think. And uh, yeah, what an event. Some uh, pretty cool stuff. If you want to see my collection, by the way, of sports cards, let me know. I'll maybe do a video on that. There is a lot of bangers and heaters. <laughs> so uh, yeah, enjoy it if you're ever there. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next video.